Saint Nick came down the chimney about a half past three. Left all these pretty presents that you see before. Why, howdy, and welcome to my little cheesy channel. For the next 47,000 minutes, I'm going to consume and waste nothing but your time. No, I'm just goofing. I hope I don't waste your time. I hope we both learn something. This is an item that I've owned now for a good month or better, maybe two months. And I just was not in a position when I received it to either play with it or test it or utilize it or anything like that. Once I got the new bench all set up and gear stabbed into place and stuff like that, I still have projects I needed to get done before I got to this. Today is its lucky day because I'm getting to, uh, getting, getting to get to it. That's absolutely horrible English. Not the Queen's English by far, I'm sure. Hey, it's an American English. How's that? Anyway, what you're looking at, in case I didn't already say it, is a 10 megahertz active crystal oscillator module. And you see right there on the faceplate, right about there, it says TCXO. And for those of you who don't know, that stands for Temperature Controlled Crystal Oscillator. And we're at the frequency of 10 megahertz. What this, um, what this does is, it, it um, lack of a better word I guess, transmits a, a 10 megahertz frequency. This module, I believe, does it in both sine wave and square wave, but I could be completely wrong with that. We will hook this up to the, um, to the O-scope, and we'll see what kind of pattern it puts out. We're also going to hook it up to a frequency counter to see where it sets. Now, you can see on the front panel right here, we actually do have a screw terminal that will allow you to calibrate this. Now, what you find inside of this is going to be a crystal and it's supposed to have its own little oscillator. While we're doing the uh, tour of this thing or talking about it, we might as well finish, uh, finish out the tour. How's that? Here we see two lugs. This is going to be our, for our power strip, a positive and a negative. And right here we have a SMA female connection. Now this is a very petite item. Let me give you a, a reference point. That's how, um, that's how massive this little guy is. Very, very petite as stated. Let me turn it around. And that's it. As you can see, way over here, we have a diode and what appears to be a resistor. I've not checked. I'm really not sure. Very petite, very minuscule circuitry. This is a cheap Chinese eBay product, of course. I'm sure you're aware of that. The specs on this, they claim to be at a precision of 0 0.1 ppm. And uh, now that I'm looking at the uh, paperwork, it says that the size on this is 14 by 31 millimeter, excluding the SMA connection. This runs on a 3.3 positive volts, and I paid a whopping $13.94 with free shipping for this item. This item also came in a uh, 20 megahertz package, but I needed uh, one of the 10 megahertz. And what you do with this item is you connect it to a device or devices. I'm going to use this as a reference clock, or at least I would like to use this as a reference clock. Now there are more expensive reference clocks which can get into the thousands. As a hobbyist, it's very hard to warrant such an expense as as somebody who doesn't do this as a profession, who doesn't make money off of this craft. Again, it's very hard to justify spending, you know, thousands of dollars or even five hundred dollars on such an item. And that's very much what you'd be looking at for better items. Now I have found another item of interest which would sell for just about a hundred dollars depending on how this thing works I may go for that if this one works out fine I'm fat and happy now as a crystal control device they do have drift and over time years the crystal will drift and that's what we have this little screw terminal right here to to adjust it and try to get it back on frequency now with this being outside in the open air like you see it now with ambient 
temperature changes in the room, the frequency will also fluctuate. You may have heard items, uh, crystals, or devices reference to ovens, such as your function generators, signal generators, frequency counters, etc., etc. And basically, a, a, a heater is the device wrapped in a styrofoam box, and pretty much that's it, done. They could also have a leg of a resistor wrapped around the crystal or said device, heating wire, and just the, the uh, voltage running through that would heat the device up or at least keep it at a stabilized set temperature that the manufacturer would like to have it for that stability. Now, you may also see these things goobered up in silicone or epoxy or some other kind of material as such. And again, that's all to keep your crystal or other pertinent parts warm for temperature control. If this item works out for me, then I would definitely put it in a small project box or wrap it in styrofoam or something to keep it heated. I want this to do 10 megahertz. If this can do 10 megahertz and my frequency counter agrees that yes, it is putting out 10 megahertz. This frequency counter here, I feel pretty confident it is reading accurate. I will test it with a couple other frequency counters and if I can get a average that yeah, they're all reading at, at about 10 or right at the same number, I'm gonna be fat and happy because I want this device right here to actually be my standard. One of the many reasons I purchased this was I wanted a digital 10 megahertz frequency and, and by all means you could definitely see this will give me my 10 megs and you could see the resolution that this device has it will definitely get me down to where I go this device I feel pretty confident it is on frequency whether it's dead on frequency another story but I feel pretty confident it's it's right there so if I could at least get this item to be comfortably on frequency, maybe not this far down on the resolution, but by all means, these four digits right here after this de uh, decimal, I will be very happy and will be very, um, we'll call that a, a success. I will use this as my reference to then ensure that this is calibrated or at least putting out its proper signal to ensure that's properly calibrated to ensure that's properly calibrated, to ensure that's properly calibrated, and a whole host of other devices to be calibrated. Now, a lot of these devices do not take a 10 megahertz reference. However, if I can make sure that that's at 10 megahertz, then I could come in and put this at one kilohertz, put my audio at one kilohertz. Of course, I'm in the wrong screen for that. So that's how I would want that set up. One kilohertz modulation at 30% at the frequency of 1000 hertz and 50 millivolts for a good start. By doing that, I can now calibrate that meter, calibrate that meter, as well as a whole host of other devices. So this is a, a really useful piece of test gear to help calibrate your test gears. At least that's the hope that I'm going for. With that said, let's go ahead and hook this up now and see what it does. I have the power supply set to 3.2 volts, as you can see right there. I went ahead and took the liberty of hooking up the wire off camera as I also hooked up my power source. We got the frequency counter set up, and I, I think I'm set up where you should be able to see me just fine. And uh, so we'll pull the little cap off. Like I stated, I, I've not hooked this up, so we're doing this together for the first time. Look, we were already receiving a signal. All right, so in this scenario, white is red, black is ground. And watch the frequency counter as I hook this up. Like I said, first time. Let's see where we're at.
Keep my wire separated. Wow. That is impressive. I think this free counter will read on that other side at 10. I could be wrong. There we go. Let's change resolution. So that's at uh, 4 second gate time. Or I'm sorry, 0.4 second gate time. And that's holding steady until I spoke. So let's go ahead and drop this down to 4 seconds and that'll change the resolution as well. Very, very, very impressive. So I think at this point in time, no other test needed. That definitely worth the 12 bucks or whatever I paid for it. $13.94 US pennies. Now it's very plausible the longer this thing stays powered up that it'll generate its own warmth, own heat, and will stabilize. But man, that is awesome. Let's hook this up to a oscope and see what it do. All right, so here we're looking at my 10 mud 20 megahertz oscope. I'm thinking I should have hooked it up to my other scope. Not bad. Let me move you over to my other scope. Now this scope here is a 100 meg scope and I have the lights dimmed. So that's the uh, wave pattern we get on this, which is a, um, a digital signal, not a sine wave. Uh, I see this more contributed to a square wave. Okay, so we're going to call this part of the exercise a absolute and utter fail. Not only due to my inexperience, but I should at least get an A for effort. At least I had an idea of what I wanted to achieve. Now I know I can't achieve it at high frequencies. And that's the other thing. Lack of equipment. Better equipment is what's needed. And even at that, I don't know if that would, you know, exactly read what I'm trying to do. What you're seeing is what I was trying to achieve. What this part of the exercise would have shown was if these two items were in sync, this spinny thing, I have no idea what it's called. We'll call it a spinny thing. That's a very technical and scientific name. So we got that goofy spinny thing right there. And if these two items were in sync, instead of spinning like that, that would actually freeze. And you would see a really cool pattern. But I think what's happening is we are at a high frequency and because it's so high, I'm unable to read it because of my equipment or it's just not achievable at that higher frequency what I've seen and what I've experimented with lower frequencies. The takeaway from all this, however, that little device shoots out 10 megs right out of the box. At this point in time, worth the $14. We got that switched to 10, got that to 50, and we got that to on. And there we go, 10 megs, right on the money. There we go. So we're getting 1.7 and a half AC volts. Yeah, I could read, can't I? DC, goober. So in conclusion, I would definitely highly recommend buying one of these little goofy devices. Anyway, thanks for watching what should have been a 10 minute video. Turned into a, a time waster again. Anyway, I hope it was educational if it wasn't fun or painful or whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye. And here you can see I've connected it up to the signal analyzer just to get an idea of what it looks like there. I don't know if this is typical of what I should be seeing. I don't know if it's typical of my really, really cheap and cheesy signal analyzer, or I should say what I'm using for a signal analyzer. So I'm just kind of curious uh, for those that have a better signal analyzer, what does your 10 meg reference look like on it? Is the purity as is as nasty as this, or is it cleaner? All right, so this time we're really finished with the video. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.